The situation in the Middle East is growing more violent and turbulent by the day. Proxy wars pitting the Sunni Saudis against the Shia Iranians have now led to airstrikes in Yemen. And in Iraq, U.S. warplanes have now joined the fight against ISIS in Tikrit. Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry reports from the White House. Saudi Arabia unleashed airstrikes today that pounded military bases in Yemen as an Arab-led coalition that includes Saudi and Egyptian troops is also planning a ground attack against Shiite rebels tied to Iran who have pushed out the U.S.-backed government. While the head of U.S. Central Command, General Lloyd Austin, acknowledged today those allies did not tell the Obama administration about the operation against the Houthi rebels in advance. That is because they believe that we are siding with Iran. A Middle Eastern head of one of the Gulf countries told me, and I quote him, we believe that it is more dangerous to be a friend of America's than an enemy. All of this as Secretary of State John Kerry today in Switzerland continued talks with Iran over its nuclear program. U.S. officials confirming that Iranian President Rouhani passed another letter to President Obama through the negotiating team, while aides say Kerry conducted a conference call with Gulf allies who are taking the lead in Yemen. And noted the United States support for those coalition efforts, including intelligence, sharing, targeting assistance, and advisory and logistical support for strikes against Houthi targets. Republicans quickly charged this is another example of the president sitting on the sidelines while Iran is waging a proxy war against the Saudis and its Arab allies. That the vacuum created by America's failure to lead in the Mideast is setting in motion a calamity that could result in a bloodletting between Sunnis and Shias that we haven't seen in a thousand years. That came as Iranian-backed Shia militias left the key Iraqi city of Tikrit, a condition the U.S. demanded before launching new airstrikes against ISIS because the Iranian effort had stalled. The president's foreign policy is under the microscope since he declared last September Yemen was a success. And even this week, his aides continued to insist it can be a template for a successful U.S. counter-terror strategy. Why can't you just say, you know what, we were wrong, it's not a model for success. And that strategy, even in Yemen, despite all of the challenges that readily, that I readily acknowledge exist there, that we have put intense pressure on extremists inside of Yemen. And it has mitigated the threat that they pose to the U.S. in the West. That despite the fact that Yemeni President Hadi had to flee and turned up today in Saudi Arabia. It was left to Russian President Vladimir Putin to call the Iranian president to seek a ceasefire in Yemen, while Republican presidential hopeful Jeb Bush jumped into the criticism of Mr. Obama in an interview with Fox's Brian Kilmeade. If our friends don't count on us and trust us, and there are many examples of that, and our enemies don't fear us, it creates the challenges that we're now seeing. Now, the L.A. Times revealed that the Houthi rebels captured U.S. intelligence documents that the Americans left behind as they rushed out of Yemen. The State Department today had no comment on what may be a disastrous development. Chris?